Dayton, Ohio. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm always surprised uh, uh, how many people have been to Ohio. Have you, if you're familiar with Ohio, been there? Yeah, all right. All right, that's great. Yeah, so Dayton, Ohio, for those of you who don't know, like two things you should know, the Wright Brothers um, from Dayton, Ohio, and Guided by Voices, uh, Dayton's, Dayton's gift to rock and roll, um, hometown heroes. So um, I run the Dayton Data Visualization Group out there. And um, also, all the code, everything I'm going to show you today is on GitHub now. So you can hit this URL, um, github.com slash bowmanmc slash designing underscore maps, and get all the code. And it's really designed that way too, right? So I'm going to go over a lot of stuff today. Um, and especially those of you who are sort of new to uh, JavaScript or the web, you'll probably want to take that home and digest it a bit and check things out there. Um, my Twitter handle, WebSlingerM, um, where I generally make a fool of myself and talk about data visualization type stuff. Um, uh -oh. There we go. All right. So, um, yep, there's the source code for it. It's also running live out there, too, if, uh, if downloading the code and digging through it's not your thing. Um, so real quick, we'll just uh, jump into what is D3.js. Um, like Data-driven documents, that really says it all. And if you start getting confused about D3 and like why they're doing things a certain way, uh, just go back to that, right? Because that's what it's all about. We got data, and we want to put it in a document and bind that data to your DOM element, right, or your SVG element. And really, it's a toolkit for building interactive visualizations with SVG. Um, and so that's also really helped me um, really learn to love D3, right? So it's not like um, high charts or some of these other libraries where you can just drop it in, add a line of code, and you get a beautiful map, right? It's um, really sort of, you have all the tools to manipulate SVG and a lot of helper functions, but it's up to you to build something with it. So um, you know, that's why I think it's a real testament to the framework there. If you go to their website and look at the examples, there's hardly any two that look, look similar, right? So. Um, why SVG? Um, you know, it's a W3C standard. It's you know rendered into your browser. You get your Chrome Dev tools. You can open up and see what's going on, right? If you're rendering out like to a ping or something else or WebGL, right? The the data sort of goes away off into a pixel, and you can never get back to it. Um, with SVG, you can always get back to the source data and see what's going on. You get an actual element rendered to the DOM, which is really cool. Um, you know, human readable, sort of, if you're a certain type of human, right? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, but you, you can kind of dig through it and see, see, what, see what's going on. Um, and why is it good for making maps? Um, so I think it's really great for design. So if you're doing an infographic or you're a journalist or, you know, you just want to do, um, you know, it's really focused on design. You know, when you render an SVG element into your browser, you, you, you get a black SVG. There's no styles applied to it whatsoever. So you sort of have to build up from there and um, go from there. Also, you know, projections, interactivity, um, colors. I'm going to show you how to integrate it in with color brewer scales later on. Um, so these are all, we, all really great things that help us make maps with D3. All right, so um, that's all the slides I've got. So you guys ready to see some code? All right, so real quick, so the first one I have here is just a basic a map, okay? So here's the beautiful state of Ohio rendered in a pretty standard styles, right? Just blue and white. Um, so um, we'll dig through the code here real quick, and I'll show you how I'm doing it. So um, I know that's probably a little hard. You know, I didn't know people would be standing so far back there. So um, you know, hopefully you guys can see it. If not, download the code and check it out. Um, I know like a lot of you guys have laptops here. So a lot of this is just basic uh, like bootstrap type stuff. But the important thing is I have a full screen map here. And I just have some basic CSS applied to it to make it the full, to sort of expand to its container, right? Um, and then I've included the, uh, the D3.js down here. So we'll go ahead and jump into that. So I've tried to keep all this code pretty simple. Um, you know, at work, I'm a big fan of AngularJS and SAS. 
So um, those tools are great, but I wanted to keep this talk sort of accessible to anybody. So I'm just using basic D or jQuery stuff as sort of helper functions and um, sticking close with uh, with basic CSS here. But you know, definitely if you if you're into SAS or less, you know, those are awesome tools to use in conjunction with this. All right. So um, when I load up the map, the first thing I do is pull in the element ID here, and I get the map, right? And here's some bit of uh, code here. So I kind of like my maps to um, expand the element they're in. So you know, if it's if the user's on a smaller screen, you know, it'll still be 100%. So basically, all I do here is calculate sort of the ratio of the width to height. You know, I know Ohio is about 960 by 1200 pixels. Um, and since we're SVG, we can expand that, and you know we're not going to have any problems with um, pixelization or anything like that. All right, um, we pick out a projection for our stuff. So basically, all I do here in the initialize method is I'm you know setting some defaults, setting the map size, um, you know pick a projection. The path element here is um, you know it takes in a projection, and that's what helps you convert from latitude longitudes to x y pixel coordinates on the screen. Um, so you need, and if you notice too, it's actually a function um, that we're saving to do this math later. Um, and then here's how we append the SVG. So if you remember that div full screen map that I had before, that's what this guy does right here. He just puts an SVG element under it and sets the width and height for it. All right, and then we're going to load in the state data. So I use, um, I really like Angular's um, Promises API, and jQuery has a similar one. So that's all this stuff is doing. So you know, when you're dealing with JavaScript, you have to deal with the, like the callback hell, right? And all the asynchronous processing that's going on. So, um, but with Promises, it makes the syntax a little bit better, right? So I can say something like, get the state. So this is getting the outline of Ohio. And then I want to you know, take that data and do something with it, all right? So here's how you, in D3 we have a JSON function, which is super cool. So what this does is it'll load the JSON file from the server. But if you've dealt with uh, JSON or anything um, like through jQuery, you always have to um, you know convert it to Java, ob, JavaScript objects later. And there's uh, we have JSON and uh, TSV and CSV. So all these will sort of convert it from the text uh, files and response you'd get from a server into a JavaScript object that you can uh, manipulate and do. OK. Um, so and then here's how we actually draw that data. So now, by this point, we've got the outline of Ohio. We um, I do some initial stuff here. So if you look at the D3 examples, I wanted to do Ohio because I think a lot of the examples, they'll show um, the whole United States, right? And um, you know, when you really want to zoom in on your data, like a state or a park or something individual, you have to do this sort of stuff. So this looks kind of scary, and um, you know, it would be if I had to figure it out. But luckily, this is sort of boilerplate code you'll see a lot on, uh, on D3 websites. And I've just sort of condensed it down here into, um, into a, a chunk. And you'll see this in all the maps throughout the rest of the talk. So, and you guys can do this. To all it's doing is I get the, the bounds of the data I was passed in, and it's doing some uh, computations here to see like how to scale it and how to translate it within the projection to show it on the map. Okay, um, so just uh, yep, keep that in your pocket. You might have to stare at it for a little bit to understand it, but it's really not too hairy, all right? And then we go ahead and uh, scale it, and then we take the path. So with SVG. Um, you know, we have a path element, and how you draw that path element is with this D attribute down here. And notice that this is our path function too. So for every point in our data, we're going to send it into this path element or path function, and it's going to um, you know do the computation, you know, to convert a latitude and longitude into an x y coordinate on our screen. Okay. Um, all right, so before I go on, any questions there? You guys are quiet. That's all right. I guess if we all talked, it'd be way too loud. All right, so hopefully, hopefully that doesn't scare anybody, right? So that's just sort of basic. So we've got a map on the screen now, right? But it's, it's more than that, right? Because now we have an SVG element in 
HTML, and we can use all of our cool tools now. So you know, I can set, I can keep my styles in a separate separate style sheet. You know, if you're using SAS or something, you can you know fit this in with your website color scheme. You know, and you keep your uh, you know your sort of presentation code away from your logic code and drawing code, and that's a win. All right. So if you're building maps with uh, uh, D3, you know you sort of get um, an SVG bonus bonus round, right? So anything now that you have available to you in SVG, you also have available to you with your D3 map. So that includes things like uh, pattern fills. So you can use, um, you know, I've got like little lights there showing up, lighting up Ohio. Um, gradient fills, so you can do, um, you know, complicated, complex gradients um, in your maps now too, and label clipping too. So we can clip, clip, um, text and different uh, things to complex shapes there, too. So we'll uh, jump through that code real quick. So like I said, so you can see this uh, for the, the labels there, it's uh, sort of the same code we had before, right? We're going to set up our map, set the size, you know, do some basic stuff. So the difference here is, um, you know, you can also, you don't have to draw everything through D3, right? And that would be really cumbersome too. And especially like a, if you're using something like Angular or Ember, you know, I'm always wrapping these things in directives and you can actually have a, you know, sort of template your uh, SVG out and then just select D3 and bind the data to it here. So notice this time I didn't create the SVG element under there. I just grabbed what was already there. And uh, if you want to see what that looks like, um, so see, note this time I have an SVG element under that div, and this is where I've defined an SVG, all of my circle fill. I've defined the gradient here for um, you know going yellow to red to sort of purple, dark red, um, and what the offset stop uh, stops are. And um, you know you can pull this stuff straight out of Illustrator if you know, if you work in Illustrator or Inkscape. You know it's just SVG, right? So you save it out of there, open it up, and you can plop it in here. Um, and then the D3 portion, what we're going to do is add the path elements under, you know, as a sibling here to this defs element. And we're going to use it. So we select the SVG attribute. Here's what it looks like. The same thing here. So hopefully, I always get a lot of questions after this talk on like what I'm doing here with the promises, but um, you know, it just sort of enables this, you know, concise syntax here, right? So we get the state data again. This hasn't changed, and now. Um, Let's see. So I used a conic conformal projection for this map. Um, and so when you do some of those projections, you have to also add a rotation variable in here for your thing. But um, you know, hopefully it's a little more complex now, but not too bad, right? Um, and this is all just boilerplate, right? So there's nothing Ohio specific in this code here. I'm just sort of taking the bounds of my data and then fixing the projection so I'm zoomed in and looking you know, real tight on that data. Okay, and then um, look, so here, this is where the fill pattern is, right? And I'm just referencing an ID of a definition that I have in that defs block in SVG now, right? Um, same sort of thing here. Um, you, you have to, so if you want to do a clip path, you also have to define that path and define it as a clip path um, using uh, the clip path tag, right? So that's what this does here, and it gives it an ID, and then I'll use it down here. Um, in my text element, right? So I say, render this text, but clip it to the to this path here defined by this ID. Right, and then this is all just uh, just stuff here to do it. Um, also, D3 has this cool centroid function. I'll get to this a little bit later, um, but you know you can do um, pretty complex um, geo stuff here too, calculating the centroid of polygons, the middle of lines, that sort of thing. Um, Okay, yeah, and this is just some uh, JavaScript jank to sort of make Ohio bigger than what the thing is, so, uh, um, so I actually have to clip it. Okay, so move right along. And if you guys got questions, just sort of holler out, uh, raise your hand, you know, I'm totally cool with that. Um, 
So we got our SVG bonus, right? But also since we're using web technologies and um, the browser, we also get a CSS bonus too, right, for free in all of our maps. So sort of CSS line animation, all of your uh, CSS animations and transforms, you can also pull off in D3 with, you know, and I say with D3, right, but that's not really D3. That's just sort of a benefit of using SVG and the browser. So we have, uh, you know, we get CSS hover events now that we can also tie to uh, with JavaScript and pull out elements. And then, um, you know, like I said, the line animation stuff, if you want to add, you know, interactivity, fade ins, fade outs, those sort of animations, you can do that now too. Um, so I'll show you the code for that. So this one gets a little bit compl more complex now, right? Because I have the state data that I want to render and I have the county data. So still sort of the same setup up here up front. We're setting up our map. Um, I'm also using group tags. So an SVG uh, a G tag is how um, SVG renders layers. So if you had something open in Illustrator, you had a bunch of layers, you save it, you would find that all of your layers get rendered out as in these G elements here. And that's just a handy way to sort of control the order in which things get rendered. Right? And then so we're getting this. State, da state data, then we get the county data, and then we draw it. Um, and that's just some uh, code there for the redraw buttons to work. Um, but the interesting thing here, so this is all the same, right? Um, but you'll notice now, when I draw something, I call this animate function, and I send it a ID of the element I want to animate. Um, and the same thing with the county data here. I get all the counties. Um, so, and here's some example too of, you know, once we get the data back, it's just a JavaScript object now, and it's converted from JSON into this JavaScript object. So, um, you know, before when I was doing an attribute, I would just do something like this, hard code it, right? But with D3, um, you can also give it a function, and if you give it a function, for every element in the array you're binding to, to this, uh, this thing, it'll pass it in here each time and give you the, the actual data element and the index in the array it is. So you can do th cool things like alternate like background colors or, um, or like, like here I'm putting the ID of the path element equal to the, the FIPS code in the, um, the county, which is just like an ID for a county, right? And you can also have logic in there too. So, you know, if it's Montgomery County where Dayton, Ohio is, I set it, I color it to red, you know, otherwise I just give it, uh, I give it an extra CSS class, otherwise I just give it one. Um, and then the animate, this is, um, if you guys want to check this out, this is um, just a Jake Archibald sort of uh, did this early in 2014. Um, it's just, um, you know, you're setting, it's a little, little clever trick to use the uh, dash array and the dash offset to sort of make it look like things are getting drawn on the map and you animate those properties so, um, so things sort of fill in as it's being drawn. Okay, so that's what it's doing right there. All right. So that's, uh, all right, any questions so far? Just check, everybody still awake? <laughs> all right, so, uh, so chloropleth maps, right? So now we can, um, this is where we'll get into some of the more, uh, I think SV, or D3 is really good at building thematic maps and um, sort of infographics. So this is a, um, an example of a, you know, sort of a basic chloropleth map, right? So I think this is uh, unemployment data from 2008. Um, but what we're doing here is, you know, if you download the D3 distribution, you also get a uh, colorbrewer.css file that you can use, um, and it gives you like just the basic things you'd expect from Color Brewer, right? You have the three, like how much do you want, how many buckets do you want your data to go into, right? Three, six, or nine. Um, you can choose that there. Um, and then what's your color ramp? So we can switch this around and do different, you know, you can pick one out and you know, um, you know, the color brewer scales are designed to sort of be optimally um, good across a lot of different platforms and a lot of different users. So they're great. You should use them. Um, 
So I'll show you how we did that. Sort of the same setup here, right? This is all sort of looking uh, repetitive a little bit. Um, but when I go to color the counties, right, here's we get these uh, cool D3 functions for scaling. So you can take um, the extent right here, right, is my whole range of data. So the minimum unemployment rate to the maximum employment rate. And uh, once we have that, you can send it into, this is a, a quantizer, right? It'll take your data and sort of map it from your domain to the range. And in the range, this matches a color brewer class, right? These, uh, the, the, the color brewer classes look something like Q and then, um, um, you know, three dash, you know, one, right, through nine. So that will, uh, that shows what's going on there. And then we get the fill patterns from that. Okay. Um, so this is just code for drawing the legend. So we're drawing some box elements and coloring them. Um, <laughs> and my linter's going nuts, so. Don't, don't copy this JavaScript. Don't use it in production code. All right. Uh, okay, yep, so here's our, uh, here's our counties, right? We're still doing the handle hover, right? So we're getting events when, you, when the user mouse is over. Um, and then this kind of got a little bit more complicated, right? But um, you can dig into this on your own. This is just using promises still um, and storing the data so we can cache it and recolor it really quickly. All right. Any questions there? I feel like I'm blazing through here, but all right. And we used to, you know, a lot of times I give this talk to like web developers and they're all, they, they have a lot of problems with the uh, GIS stuff, so I don't know. Um, you know, if you have any problems with this code or whatever, you know, send me a tweet or email me. And if you have any more questions, I see lots of people scribbling things down real quick, so, um, you know, let me know if you have any questions. All right, so D3JS proportional symbol map. So here we can take the, uh, the data and do two different things with it, right? We'll get, uh, you know, we'll take the, make the color of the circle um, related to the unemployment rate, but then also the size of the circle, like the, the higher the unemployment rate, the bigger the circle's gonna get, right? And that's where the proportional symbol uh, comes from. All right, so. Well, yeah, let me just demo. So, yeah, mouse over, we still get like the, the data. We're showing it off to the side here. So, um, sort of, you know, all these maps are building on top of one another. So, this is what we did with the, col the choropleth map before, right? You put the uh, color brewer scale you want to use on, you know, sort of above the elements you're going to style with it. So, we'll put it on the group tag here where our counties are. And then each one inside of there is going to have the, you know, the quantized, you know, three dash eight or whatever it is for how many buckets we have. All right. And then, um, yeah. So here's how we draw the dots. Um, you know, we want, you know, in this example, I want the, the higher numbers, the higher the unemployment rate, that's bad. So I want that in the theme to go red. So it'll go from uh, blue to red, depending on the unemployment rate. Um, so just uh, be careful there when you're using the extent. Um, I think by default it usually goes from zero to one, but if you flip them, they'll go the other way. Um, all right, here's where we get the circle. Um, and this is just uh, doing some, um, you know, this is the radius of the circle. So we get the unemployment rates. That's the data we're gonna bind in D3JS. So we have this big array of unemployment numbers. We're gonna stick that to the circle elements. Um, Here's the radius of the circle. We're actually, you know, we'll pass in the data element, use that to figure out the radius of the circle. And then um, here's the centroid thing popping up that I wanted to explain a little bit more. So once we get the, once we get the data element, we wanna know the center of the county to draw that. So here we're using the geocentroid um, function again, so we just take the whole county, the, the shape of the county, send it into that, and that'll give me a latitude and longitude of the center of that polygon or whatever I passed into it, 
right? And then this is how in SVG you translate that. So when I call projection, this is going to give me the XY value, like the XY offset value of that latitude and longitude. So this is sort of string building here, but this is going to get put onto a transform element that's in that, in that path or in that circle. Um, so this is all the same stuff. All right, so we've got five more minutes. Let's do, um, all right, so last map here. Other cool thing, okay, so like in Ohio, some of you guys will know, right, uh, Skyline Chili is a big thing there. We put chili and cheese on hot dogs and, uh, and, and spaghetti, and it's really awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, you took all the Skyline restaurants and mapped them out here. And this is sort of illustrating another, you know, some more cool things you can do with D3. Like, not that this is the best visualization ever, but you know, I'm using a satellite projection here. So I've got a little bit of code in there for doing something other than just standard, right? But, you know, I wholeheartedly encourage you to pick the projection best for your data. Pick the projection that's best going to get your, uh, your message across, right? Um, you know. Web Mercator, I think, is rarely the answer, um, you know, unless you're showing a global data set, then maybe. But, um, you, know, you know, and you have a lot of options in D3, okay? So, and here's, uh, this is also showing JavaScript animations. So, um, you know, before we did the CSS animations on things, um, you know, if you follow a lot of the web development blogs, there's always um, contention over which is faster, which is better, CSS animations or JavaScript animations. Um, you know, and I'm not going to pick either one. You can do both. Um, you know, you should always pick the one that's best suited for uh, for the job you're doing. So let's go in and see how I show you how I made this one. All right. So here's our skyline map. Um, so there's a little bit of Ohio ish code in this one, right? So now when I do the satellite projection, I have to tell it, you know, how far away the view at point is, um, you know, where I'm looking at, how far to tilt the satellite. The satellite. Um, but, you know, once, once you get past that, the rest of this code is going to be exactly the same. Uh, it gets a little more complex here, right? Because I had the graticools on the back, and then I had the, uh, the counties are still there. So um, with SVG, things get rendered in sort of the layer there, uh, the order they're drawn here. So I've put, put like a background and foreground and a data layer here. So just um, just so I can render things and not worry about when they're, you know, I, I figure out the order I want them in up front and then I'll render to those layers later. Okay. Um, and here, so I mentioned before, like D3 has a lot of uh, cool functions here for dealing with data. So this time I'm, I'm loading a tab separated file. Um, and let me pull this up because this one isn't isn't so big. Um, so the cool thing, so these this is a tab separated file, right? And you can see the first line in it. I have latitude, longitude, the store name, um, the city, address, phone number, right? But when D3, like this utility function here, reads it, it'll take the first line. And then that's your, it's going to create a JavaScript sort of dictionary element for you. And it uses the first row to figure out what to name each thing, right? So then um, when it reads this, you're going to get a JavaScript object back. And the latitude attribute is going to have the, vol the values here in this first column, longitude, second column, and so on. OK. Uh oh, better hurry. So um, yep, and here's how we're doing some of the uh, JavaScript uh, animations. Right, um, same sort of thing here. We're getting each each guy here, and you can see this is a like a pin marker map, but it could also be a dot density map if that's what you were building. Um, we're doing the translate function again here, um, and then this is uh, how you draw an ellipse, right? So I wanted it to sort of uh, if you look here, they're not really circles; they're sort of ellipses, so they look like they're laying down. Um, but yeah, and here's our, uh, so we do, we do a transition for half a second with this easing um, and set the color in it, right? And that's all you have to do. Um, and you also get, you know, click events, mouse over events. I've got those uh, pinned to the maps there too. Okay. So with that, um, I also have at the end of this, 
space. Here's a whole bunch of references. So we have um, Ohio shape files, POI factory. Oh, here you guys probably can't see that. Let me see. Um, POI factory is a great resource to get. Like they have all sorts of cool stuff in there you can pull out um, if you just want some data to play around with and and mess around with. Um, and I have links here uh, to to different D3 re resources. This uh, this one's a really great. Um, I forgot the Wi-Fi here is a little, well, that's not too bad. So any, if, if you're stuck, you know, the D3 uh, can definitely be overwhelming to beginners. So, um, you know, here I search for uh, the D3 Geo package, and I can find all the blocks out there that use that, use that library. And so we can go through and see all the different examples and uses of it. So if you're looking for a specific function, you can always just plug it in here and see where everybody else is using it and check out their code. So that's a great one. Um, and there's some different cartography resources, uh, the Dayton Data Visualization Group. Uh, links right here. So um, I think we got uh, a couple minutes. Any questions? Yeah, sure. So I feel like the code is really clear, but maybe what's not so clear to me is like the hierarchy of how different authors um, are being built. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 how I do it, right? And so, and a lot of times you want to sort of you want a map that looks good with the website you're building, sort of fits in the color schemes and the background textures and whatever else you're doing. So yeah, you start off with your base styles and then sort of style it um, to go along with it. Um, yeah, one of the things I didn't mention, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of uh, great stuff you can do, like um, like um, uh oh, I really goofed it up. But you know, with like with line weight and um, and different things, like you can imagine if we had like a network of rivers or roads or something, right? Here with counties, you can um, let me get the other one. You can kind of see that um, you know the county lines are are thinner than the state outlines, um, you know, and different things like that. So you can really dig deep into here and style it and get, get the effect you want, right? You have ultimate control over everything there. Yep. Sure. All right. Oh, oh sure. So like say on you were able to zoom into Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could, you know, you can definitely zoom in. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I should add that to the talk. Yeah, there's definitely examples of zooming in. And all you're doing there is um, fixing this, um, like down here where I was doing this, this bounding and zooming and scaling, right? You just have to manipulate these numbers to, like, you know, instead of a state, maybe you want to zoom into a county. So you sort of recompute it there and reset it. Um, yeah, yeah. Now I've never done that, but I have seen it. Like uh, Jason Davies is the is the geo guy behind D3, and he's really great. And he's got some great examples on like, um, and you can even see him sort of tweening. I don't know if you guys have seen those examples where it's tweening between the different projections and animating between them. They're really cool. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's possible. Definitely. Yep. Sure. Uh huh. Um, yeah, so I think translate, I have to pull that out real quick. So, tr yeah, so I'm sure I was converting between, yeah, the latitude and longitude versus the uh, x, y. So that's what's going on there. Um, you know, the, you know, I have the store coordinates in latitude and longitude, and I want to convert that. You know, because remember, when it gets to the browser and it's drawn on the screen, it's all x, y pixel data. So you have to convert between the two.
Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, this is just how I did it. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, there might be other ways to do it, definitely. Um, and that, that might be a valid way to do it, for sure. Um, but this is, uh, you know, this is how a lot of the examples are written. This is how I, I figured out to do it. So um, using a translate and sort of doing it on every element. Yeah, you might be able to, uh, like, uh, I know there's stuff with SVG where you can do view box and you could sort of calculate your initial offset and then maybe uh, do things that way, too. Um, definitely worth investigating. So. Cool. All right, well, thank you guys so much. This has been great.